Greetings people from Steel and Beyond, my name is Ronald and welcome to the 2021 tour of my audio room. This is a room that's, well, pretty small actually, like 20 square meters, something like that. And well, there's a lot packed in here. There's a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos and DTSX surround sound system. There is a two channel hi-fi system and there is a two channel, well, actually a 2.1. Uh, system for my computer audio so there's a lot to talk about i have recorded this video so many times and it ends up being like 30 40 minutes long and uh, that that's not what i want so today i'm just going to show everything and please keep in mind this is my system this is the way i do things i have things in different places for a reason and no the speakers that i'm using are not too big this system is not too big for the room everything is just fine the way my main speakers are designed, they work really well in near field or even in close range. I sit about seven feet away from them, so everything is fine. Okay, so, well, let's start with the, the, the room here. I have uh, treated it slightly with really thick carpet with a uh, dampening underlayer, so there is, well, no echo in here. Then I have, um, well, to dampen the acoustics a bit, um, some uh, studio foam installed. And I have, well, those uh, vinyl pieces there, artworks, uh, also dampened a little bit. And actually my whiskey shelves um, kind of work as a diffuser because I've, well, always had my system in this room. And every time that I changed something, I used to have like a lot of shelves here. And it got really equi. That's when I put all these um, um, studio panels in. And uh, well, the same with this. I had really big shelves here. And, and they, well, didn't look nice. So I put other ones in. So everything is the way I like it. Behind the speakers, I also have some room treatments. Um, yeah, I would just say let's get started. And uh, if you have questions or anything, just ask them. I have a lot of videos on this channel regarding all this stuff you see here. So yeah, take a look around. And if you like what I'm doing, then please subscribe and check back later. All right, first, well, there's the, the entrance. Um, here I have all my vinyl. It's a lot. Um, I need to find a better system for this because I can't find anything. But um, yeah. Then we have, um, well, a nice little little plant over there. I, I like a little bit of uh, nature, a little bit of greenery in my setup. I'm not one that's all clean and, well, white and all that stuff. So, uh, this is my latest acquisition. This is the N NVIDIA Shield Pro. Um, we'll get to that. Some drinks. I, I, I like my, my alcohol. <laughs> um, I, I, well, I collect whiskeys. I know that stuff, uh, really. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, first let's just start with the stereo system. The stereo system is, well, built around my most prized possession. These speakers are amazing. I made a dedicated video about them. But these are MB Quad QL29S, I believe. They're really big. Really, really big. Um... They weigh about 120 kilos, and <laughs> we needed four people to carry them uh, down and, and then up the stairs. It's it it was not not fun. All the information you find uh, on the on the internet about these is well pretty much wrong actually because <laughs> the the dimensions aren't right and and all that stuff. So um, yeah, piano gloss black. They are absolute units of uh, speakers. And I love them. They're sealed. Uh, I can try amp the bastards if I want to. Um, they they are they, they were my dream speakers. Still are. I haven't found anything that comes close to them. And well, the story behind them is kind of special because they belonged to my uncle, who sadly passed away in 2020. Uh, not due to COVID, thank God, but it. it yeah, I, I am glad that these um, are now mine. So, yeah. Um, driving these, 
Well, actually, I, I, I have them a little bit isolated because I couldn't find feed for them. They are so heavy. If I were to get a feeding arrangement, it would cost so much. And I, no, I'm not spending that. So, cutting blocks it is, work pretty well, actually. They have a double layer inside, so the dampening is really good out of the box. And, well, they're sealed, etc. So they are, well, as linear as, as can be in terms of, well, resonance and all that stuff. Um, yeah, well, let's take a seat here and talk a little bit about what I have. First of all, this little, little thing here. This is my Onkyo M5060. It's my, well, most, well, not my most prized possession, but it's my favorite amplifier ever. I can't describe what this thing actually does, simply because it's, it does so much, so good. I have rebuilt this whole thing. I put new caps in it, uh, resoldered the thing, new wires, uh, new binding posts, new AC inlet, everything. It's an amazing piece. It sounds fantastic. And the big VU meters are just a joy. New lights as well. Cleaned the whole thing. It is a marvelous piece. Then my preamp. Uh, I haven't had this for long. It's the Audio Analog Bellini. Uh, not the new one. <laughs> I don't have the money for that. I think it was the 20 grand. This, this one was cheaper, but it was also the one that uh, Audio Analog made when they first started out so do with that information what you like but um yeah inside it's really well made tutorial transformer all the stuff i can hook up to um stereo power amplifiers so i can buy amp stuff it's it's the only thing it is it doesn't have balanced outputs but i don't use balanced outputs so i'm fine motorized volume control um a remote, uh, you, uh, I have inputs and outputs so I can record every source. It's a joy to use. It's a really good amplifier. If you ever find it, um, get it. I, I don't believe for the money there is a better preamplifier out there because I, I have looked and there are good ones but they don't have a remote and that was a must for me. So the two are connected using AudioQuest Yukon. I make my own cables most of the time um, with summer cable. Um, but um, I, I had the Yukons and I thought this was a good place to use them. And they are absolute excellent RCAs. My speaker cables are AudioQuest Rocket 44s. So yeah, that's that. Then we have, um, well, that's, that's basically my, my main stereo system. Then yeah, we should talk about the sources, I guess. I have a beautiful topping D70. It's not the MQA version, sadly, but I, I got it second hand for an unbelievable price. And it's actually a really good deck. If you set it up properly, you can adjust a lot of stuff in the main menu. It's a really nice piece. And well, I, I prefer it to the D90. The D90 is a bit too linear for me. This is more of a, well, not, not laid back or calm, but just, I, I hate that when people say, well, it sounds analog, but it's it's not as clinical as the, as the D90. So, yeah, love the thing. I um, would love to get the MQA version or another MQA deck, uh, the, the Lux GT50, I believe. It is a new, new hype, but uh, I'm going to wait a couple of years and let technology um, evolve a bit more. But um, yeah, when I'm speaking about MQA, I use Tidal mostly for my uh, music. Uh, I, I don't use streamers. I use a dedicated uh, audio PC that I custom built. Um, just off the shelf components, nothing fancy, no, no linear power supplies, just good components and knowledge about computers and software that helps a lot. I believe this is the best source because Ever since I started using dedicated audio PCs, I nothing comes close. I have a good final setup. I have pretty much got access to all the different formats. But when you get a good digital signal and a good digital signal train, you just can't beat it. I'm sorry, but um, 
yeah, it's it's just a computer, so I can use everything. I have an air remote um, with a gyroscope in it, so it's just basically like like the Wii uh, remote of yester uh, yesterday. But um, yeah, that's that's basically my main uh, source. I built all my custom power cables and and all that stuff. I have an Oya ID USB. Let's let's go take a look. <sighs> Oh yeah, ED USB, um, those are the RCA's that I built myself for using, what was it, Summer Cable Stratos, yeah. Custom built power cables, um, it's a bit of a mess, <laughs> that's not a statement. But um, all the power is separated from the, the, the analog uh, signals, so everything is hunky dory. Uh, then, a recent acquisition of mine is, you can see it right there. That's the Fudutec NCF Clearline. Um, expensive little thing, almost 300 euros. And it's basically just, well, a filter. And um, there are a lot of people who don't believe in the stuff. I didn't believe it. Um, for the first day, I was like, yeah, didn't change anything. But then the second day and the day after that and the day after that, it, it, I, I, I was hearing things from my system that I was not used to. I know my system front and back. I have really sensitive hearing. I can hear like whining from, from uh, phone charges and all that stuff, like really sensitive stuff. And, and I could immediately hear a difference uh, in, in day two and, and prolonging that, that burn in time, it got better. And then after about a week, it settled. So I, I first I was like, well, this that's 300 euros down the drain, but well, it's 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 proven. But burn-in is officially proven, my friends. I have always believed in burn-in, but this has been the the most clear example that I've ever ever heard in in components. Of course, speakers are well the most dependent on burn-in, but for component sakes. This has been the, the, the most clear burn-in period and, and change that I've ever heard. And it lifted my system. Like, you get a lot of people to say, well, my system sounds better at night than during the day. And that's for all of reasons that I won't go into. But with that thing, it's just it just got better across the line. And there's no difference between day and night listening now. So that's beautiful. Um, yeah, well, my other sources right here are Nakamichi CR2 cassette deck. Lovely, lovely. Uh, then, this is another source of mine. This is my Denon DBT uh, 3313UD Blu-ray CD, SECD player. It's currently uh, hooked up to my Denon receiver that I will get into shortly using Denon Link, etc. So I can't use it as a CD spieler. Um, it's a CD player. I'm sorry, I'm from the Netherlands, so my English isn't uh, that, that good. But uh, there, there's also my uh, Logitech Harmony Hub. Everything is voice controlled using Google Home and uh, all that fancy IT stuff. Uh, it, 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 it does help um, being a network and an IT engineer in, in audio. That's, well, that's nice. Then we have my second rack. This rack I, I built Myself, by the way, it's from solid acacia wood, cut it all to size, screwed it all together. Uh, it's built up in layers with isolation and all that stuff. It slides as well, big beams underneath to strengthen the thing. I, I couldn't find a um, rack that I liked on the market that was reasonably affordable and wasn't gargantuan in size and well fitted all my components. So. I build it myself. And well, the materials are way better than you could ever get from like a boutique company because nobody used it solid acacia. But here we uh, we have um, my turntable, sorry for the lighting. This is a project expression experience comfort. It was, it was an expensive table. Um, it uses a gold ring Eroica cartridge. Beautiful plinth, apple wood, love the thing. Um, got it really cheap, so <laughs> that's why I got it. It's a beautiful table. Um, the, the whole comfort thing is uh, due to that it uh, stops 
when uh, it detects that a record is finished. It lifts the tone arm, it stops, so that's really nice. It helps to prolong the life of your cartridge. And yeah, it, it, it just stops. So if you're bored or you don't want to get up to, well, um, turn it off, it's easy. So yeah, pretty comfortable. But uh, the rack that it's on is for mono price. Um, always wanted the thing, but uh, hasn't come to Europe until this winter, I believe. It's the monolith um, audio stand, the, the big one, in, in espresso. It's such a good rack. It's only about like 120 euros. But the thing is solid. It weighs, well, 25 kilos or something. Sturdy materials. Really good qu building quality, isolation, rubber pads in between the things, good bolts. It's a nice rack, my friends. And if I ever get more equipment or I want to build it higher, I would just get another one and do that. Also, there is one level in here that's strengthened for amplifiers, like Big Power MCC, the extra beam or leg. But there is, I think it's the bottom one. This one is strengthened more. But um, yeah, here we have, let me take a seat here, because I can show it better. This is um, <laughs> one thing that I, I got really lucky with, because I like radio when I'm working. And don't get me started on all the digital radio, I'm not, not a fan at all. But this is a Pioneer TX9500, probably one of the best tuners ever made. Uh, cost a fortune back in the day. Beautiful thing. It's been rebuilt, um, so everything works properly. <coughs> Beautiful lights as well. <sighs> it's it's a lovely thing. Um, I use it just with the FM antenna that I got out of my house, at the outside, and well, I can listen to radio, and I love it. Then down here we have a thing that well, it belonged to my dad, but it broke. Set in the attic for, I don't know how long, 10 years, 15 years. And, well, I fixed the thing. Um, and now it's mine, I guess. I, I took it. Um, and, well, it's it's a beautiful player. It's Onkyo Integra uh, DX6850 CD player. Um, everything is amazing about this thing. The only thing is the deck is garbage. Just like all the decks from the last century, basically, because it's that old. So um, I need to make a custom coax cable uh, to go to my uh, to my deck. But um, yeah, lovely, lovely CD player. I don't play a lot of CDs because I have Tidal, but. I, I do have a couple and I really like it. I would love to get like a vintage Yamaha 930 or something like that. Like a really high end um, CD player with digital output would be amazing because I don't really like the, the, the color. It's like a titanium. And unfortunately this thing is only available in silver so I couldn't get it in black, but I, would, I, I like black components. Um, Maybe this will be my silver rack because my phono preamp, it's really heavy. It uh, is a Shed Mani, probably the, the best sub 500 phono preamp. Well, there is actually that new IFI Zen phono people have been uh, raving about. But to get the thing sounding like it should, you need to buy an extra power supply and all that stuff. So you end up spending like 100 to 150 more than what the money uh, uh, goes for and and still the money does some things better but in my opinion the ifi send phono looks a bit better but yeah the, the, this 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 phono preamp yeah, I, I i would like to upgrade to something but i'm not looking to spend a grant or something like that so i'm, I'm just like well this is perfectly fine i've tried a couple a couple expensive ones and I like what the money does so I think I'll just keep it and um, I would actually really like one with uh, the, the option to well, connect two phono uh, uh, cartridges like 
you can just switch and and that way i could have two turntables a moving coil and a moving magnet because that would be amazing uh, I'm, I'm also looking to get like a, a record cleaner something like watson or project or okinoki or some, something like that but um yeah the the feet on this thing are amazing it's it's it surprisingly out of the box it doesn't come with um uh, spike holder feet things so you just end up scratching everything so i bought the things everything in my setup that is important at the moment is also isolated using well spikes uh, or uh, vibration pads my center channel is also isolated with the ulmbach isolation pads uh, the onkyo is also isolated and i will be end up isolating well everything the receiver isn't isolated at the moment the cd player isn't isolated and the cassette deck isn't isolated because i need to buy more of the spike uh, spikes they are from china china but it's it's i am a person that believes in quality and parts i do not believe in fairy tales and i also believe that the chinese are perfectly capable of handling a cnc al aluminium mill so you can buy expensive spikes for equipment in in europe that cost well i don't know how much but a lot or you can just get these things and be done with it i mean i believe there is a certain point of diminishing return for me where i would be like that's a little bit too much or i would just love to spend that kind of money in another place um so yeah the deck is Chinese, but this thing is amazingly built. It, it uses high-end capacitors, it's dual mono, it has AKM's flex chip, uh, chip inside. It's, I'm sorry, but a, a 500 uh, euro topping uh, deck shits all over European built uh, decks from the same price because they still use technology from 20 years ago. So, um, I am a really, really big fan of European made hi-fi and speakers and all that stuff. But in terms of decks and all that, that stuff, they, they really need to get going because they are just sitting on their ass. Um, yeah, that was a little, little rant of mine. Then we have this, my subwoofer. Um, well, it's an SVS. I am a big fan of SVS. I uh, used to have SVS uh, Ultra Center Channel, but I uh, upgraded as you could see. But yeah, this is the SVS PB12 NSD. For this room, it's plenty. It's it's plenty of power. Um, the, the max uh, output is about 800 watts, so I think that's that's plenty. 12 inch. I would love to get like a big 15 inch SVS, 2000 watts, <sighs> remote controlled. All, all that stuff but for this room it's just too big so when i move out i will or get a new room i will probably end up buying a new subwoofer then or just end up getting another one of these because for the price that these things go for second hand i'm sorry but you can't beat them they're amazing um i also modified it a little bit custom power cord uh, custom fuse uh, because i like tinkering with my equipment and pretty much in everything you see here, I changed the fuses. I changed the fuses in everything but the CD player or the DVD player and the receiver. Well, in the PC because it doesn't use fuses. But the Onkyo has different fuses. The audio analog has different fuses. The Nakamichi doesn't use that type of fuse, I believe. Uh, or, or I can't access it. There was a reason why I haven't upgraded it yet. But anyway, the topping has new fuses. Um, the subwoofer has also got new fuses um, and also different power cords and oh, the difference, oh, it's so much tighter and immediate and fast and everything. I also placed it on, um, uh, well, really big um, messing spikes around this, this diameter, really big. 
and no i didn't do all the upgrades at once so i actually know what 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 stuff does that's the main problem when people upgrade their systems they throw components together and don't test individual components so that they know what they do and if they want to upgrade what they should get to replace something i spent years building this and if i would use a new power cord i would immediately know what type of sound i'm looking for or what to expect or or in certain places what i still want to upgrade but um yeah overall i'm, I'm really happy with with all the stuff that i have here so i would say uh, it's again 25 minutes so i i i I can't keep this thing short, right? So, second system. Well, third, actually. I have my work set up here. I am in IT, so computers are required. Um, and, and gaming, of course. That's, that's also something that I do. Um, and yeah, I am a big MB Quad fan, okay? So I have uh, two 280s. One over there, one over here. Aren't level, etc., but don't care. It's just for when I'm using, uh, well, my computer for work, etc. And just have some music playing but normally i just turn on the big system because i do need to get a new amplifier or get this one <sighs> updated because it's a oh it has a dust patch that i forgot to clean that's that's something oh my god the wires jesus christ it's an onkyo ad 50 something like that high end integra thing but i need to clean it because the pot meter is uh well, a little wonky, but then we have a big boy MB Quad 310 subwoofer in uh, Cherry. Amazing thing, uh, same as those uh, little 220s there. Those are the rear speakers for my Shrine channel, by the way, because, well, they are behind me. So, um, yeah, and, and I prefer the bigger speakers for the uh, music uh, system. These things actually do need a subwoofer because it's just a one inch titanium tweeter with like, what is it, a six inch? seven inch woofer or something like that and they can't put out low end because they're sealed uh, everything here is sealed now i think of it the only th speakers that are ported are my little svs uh, satellites and the uh, big mb quads 2000s and the cherry finish that you see over there but um yeah the way the subwoofer works is it's a passive subwoofer so it has a lot of outputs and inputs and you just wire everything through it and you get uh, well basically a big crossover so now these things actually have a, a tweeter a seven inch mid-range and then that thing for the base it's kick ass i actually uh, would love to get like two of those and like place them next to my my big 2000s and oh, oh. but uh, no this thing's sh shit out low and uh, enough as it is so no i'm not uh, looking for that but um yeah i think the stereo systems are done let's get into surround because i i love surround already talked about subwoofer these are my side channels and uh, if we're talking about uh, speakers that are too big for the room these are these are transmission speakers from tna the criterion t160 i love diapolito arrangements as you can clearly see one speaker in the middle two mid ranges and two big woofers. Uh, this also have, has two 10 inch woofers inside as well. But in order for these things to, well, develop base and low end, you need to be like here, like, like four feet away or four meters away because I actually got my mom a pair of T120s and uh, I know how they sound at her house. It has a small Denon receiver, etc. but they kick ass because they're efficient. And uh, transmission design speakers are amazing if people who build them know what they're doing. A lot of people complain about, oh, they don't have bass, oh, but a lot of times people don't know how to use them or power them or wire them. But, oh my God, they're absolutely amazing. Because it's it's like when you hear, when you hear an instrument, like a big cello or a concert bass, you get the feeling that the whole thing is vibrating because, well, that's that's what it's for. But with these things, you get that actual same feeling, like the whole thing is just a musical instrument because of the way it's designed and the woofers inside and everything. It's amazing. And, uh, well, I, I was planning to sell them until I did another listening session at my mom's house. And I was like, no, nope, can't sell them. I'm going to keep them. So now they are my side channels. 
Um, yeah, that's it's. Uh, I I know. Um, I have my big MB Quad two thousands. They are the same layout as uh, these here, the QLS twenty nines. The Diapolito arrangement. Yes, also have a glass top, custom little brownish front cherry. They, these these are actually rare. All these MB Quad speakers and TNAs are pretty rare. Actually, I'm pretty lucky to have uh, accomplished this over the years. But um, yeah, they use Ludic Audio Magica cables. Uh, those cables are just for testing uh, speakers, audio quest banana plugs with Ullenbach, what is it, 2 times 5 millimeter wire. So yeah, decent enough uh, because I do test a lot of speakers and equipment because I am actually a reviewer for a Dutch uh, hi-fi website. So um, every now and again I do get uh, new equipment in to uh, test and write a review about. But... Um, yeah, my side channels until I move out to get a bigger room. Um, these will probably take up the place of the MB Quads and MB Quads will go to the side because these things need to be in front. What I hate, and, and, and this, is, this is typically German, because it's easy, right, to put the binding posts on the back. Right? There are the binding posts for that. Yeah, yes, that's easy. No, we put them on the bottom. You put them on the bottom of a almost 30 kilo, 130 centimeter tall uh, pillar. Yeah, no, put them on the bottom. Nice, nice job, Frans. Nice job. Absolutely hate it. But uh, when you wire them up, beautiful. So, wire them up, leave them. And then we come to the back. Uh, MB Quad 220s in the rear. Beautiful. Um, titanium tweeter, same as all the MB Quads. And what is it, a 5 inch paper hoover. All the Ambiquas also use uh, paper woofers, although these have a polypropylene uh, coating. So, yeah. Then, my SVSs. By the way, I used to have like all the speakers with their grills on, but recently I, I decided to get the grills uh, off of the speakers, especially for these. But then I got more into it. Uh, I, I removed the grills from these, and yes, I, I, because I am so sensitive, I pick up details and little micro dynamics and details really easily. So, remove of those as well. And now I also have them removed of my SVSs. I probably need to rerun uh, Odyssey because I am uh, OCD like that. But um, yeah, SVS primes, satellites on these, what is it, monoprice wall mounts. Uh, really, really amazing wall mounts, but uh, yeah, these these satellites, I believe in my opinion, best satellites uh, in the business, price to performance, uh, nothing can actually beat them, look beautiful, sound beautiful, uh, weigh a ton as well, but they are really nice. I still probably would love to get, like when I actually get a big room, like a six channel atmos setup that would be really amazing but then i would end up getting a new amplifier i also need to get uh, some more strips for that because they used to be lower but i uh, yeah long story short i need to get more of those cable strips then we come to this that's me hello this um um yeah <sighs> what what can i say it's probably one of the best setup channels in the world Bauer Wilkins uh, HTM1 Nautilus. It's the first center channel Bauer Wilkins did with this type of design, with the Nautilus tweeter and the big layout. Oh, that's, uh, excuse me, my uh, beard is uh, itching. Um, yeah, I, I, I got it at the steel for a full price. It's the, the finish matches my MB Quad 2000s. I just had to get it. I love my SVS Ultra, but this thing, the problem with Sandy channels always is that they don't sound big enough. For a big room or you have a big system, they aren't big enough. Well, this thing is. This thing is big enough. Trust me. Um, <laughs> the people in my house know. And it's <sighs> the way it sounds and everything. I, I would love to get a dedicated power amplifier, like a five channel, seven channel like 
I don't know, Rotel or something, and like really high-end um, separate power surround amplifier for my lower channels because the speakers are, well, <laughs> high-end. And well, actually the, the receiver is the Denon X 6300H, so it's not a slouch. It has mono amplifiers inside, it, it drives all my channels at the moment. And in this room, it can handle it. The speakers don't use a lot of watts. I've calculated it, it's fine. But when I move out, I would like to get a dedicated, uh, separate pre and power uh, surround setup going uh, from, from either Morantz or Anthem or uh, Arkham or something like that. It's, it's, I, I love watching movies and series, etc. And uh, this thing is an actual beast. It's, I, I love Denon receivers. Um, yeah, amazing stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with what I have at the moment. Also, that's a 15 inch uh, uh, Sony Bravia television. First thing when I move out, get a big 75 inch because uh, I, I like projectors, but I use, a television also for music and etc because of the pc so i need my uh, my telly so i think that covers all the basics and all the stuff that i have got going on actually these shelves are made from the same wood that my uh, channel my my center furniture audio furniture rack is made of but yeah uh, uh, 36 minutes and um I barely just covered it. By the way, yes, those cables are off the floor. Yes, they are actual carders, tone blocks, or whatever it, riser blocks. I, I, I got them for five euros a piece. I mean, come on. <laughs> There's another one behind uh, there. Um, if you believe in cable rising, yes or no, it's fine. I got them because I, uh, well, was routing my cables in front to begin with, because behind there is an absolute mess. And I would, would would have loved to get them off the floor, so that's why I got them. Um, amazing, um, look really nice. Um, change the sound? <laughs> I don't know, probably not, um, because the carpet is uh, well. I don't get a lot of static electricity in here, but still, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe and and all that stuff. Uh, don't forget to feed the goldfish. And uh, well, all I can say is happy listening, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.